Music Composing Gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about the downbeat and the upbeat. Just sort of clarifying a couple things. So let's come in here and let's look at, you know, a thing. So we went over how to count rhythm and stuff. The question now becomes, okay, so I'm sort of wrapping my head around this meter thing, and I'm sort of wrapping my head around this counting thing. Now, Mr. Gloves, what's the next step? What else? What? How do I make this more clear? Well... One of the things you really need to understand is the downbeat and the upbeat and how they can shift their roles based on the meter and the way you change your meter. So we have here a, let me mute this. I just realized I've left that on for a while now. Um, so we have here our, our meter, right? So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It makes sense. What? So right now, for all intents and purposes, this is the downbeat. And the second most important beat in a 4-4 measure is beat 3. So, it, it, because it splits it in halves. We have two even halves, so it makes sense to emphasize the natural halfway point. Now, then these guys are referred to as upbeats in this context. However, let's change our meter. Now, the way you do this in FL, and I just learned something so cool that I did not know of before because I never dig, dug back here. If you press, what is it, F10? F10, F11, and then go to project. So this brings you to your settings current project. And you see here we have a time division ability. This is basically how you can set your meter. Now, FL has no way of doing changing meter. So the way you would do that is you would set a meter of one. So it's just one, 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 one. And then you would just be aware of what you want to do. So FL is not friendly for changing meter stuff. It was made for dance music. It was not made to write, you know, like big, complicated modern classical pieces because they like to do weird stuff uh, as far as like older stuff that stays relatively in a meter you can get away with writing a good deal of stuff so other i'm surprised that they don't have the ability to do changing meter um if they do let me know but some i didn't know is they have a panning you can change the panning law i had to, i just found this out like what that is cool so what this is is right now we are in four four right so we have four beats per bar so there, as you can see, and see, they say bar, not per measure. So we have a bar and it sort of makes sense because this looks like a bar. Now let's go to three. So now you see our, our darker bar line is moved up. This is where our measures are. Two is moved up. So now there's only three. Let me go to snap to sell. Now we only have three beats in a, in a bar, in a measure. So we have beat one, beat two, beat three. Well, what just happened to our thing is originally this was a weak beat. Well, now that becomes a strong beat, right? So this is one, two, three, one, two, three. And so you see that our up now, where is the up beat? Well, it gets a little confusing in compound, but we can always refer to the subdivision of a quarter note into an up, into a upbeat. So what does that mean? That means that, so we know that this is still a quarter note that hasn't changed. So this thing will oftentimes, instead of referring to it on the and, sometimes people will call it an upbeat. It's not technically right, but it's something that I've seen done so much that it will, that that's just the thing you just need to be aware of. People are just trying to describe things with the terms they know. Now you have one, two, three, and it, it's a little more difficult, but these would essentially be considered our upbeats. They're beats that don't naturally receive emphasis. So one, two, three, one, two. So we went, whoa, what was that? But if we did one, two, three, that was another like, whoa. Now if we did loud all the time, we lose our sense of downbeat and upbeat. So we have one, two, three, one. It just sounds monotone. It's not, it doesn't have any sort of like pulse to it. That's not emphasizing a meter. That'd be it. Basically it's the same thing as having one, just a one, one. Or one, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two. Like it just, all the notes would be the same. And sometimes people go for that effect. It eliminates your sense of rhythm and then they'll introduce a meter back into it. Like dun, 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 dun. And so you see, we like cleanse your palate of, of meter and then we introduce a meter and then usually they'll cleanse it again. They'll do it over and over and over because it's a really cool effect. And they'll also, of course, do like that borrowed time thing where they'll change meters not meters, but they'll do like triplets and then they'll do like some simple stuff, some simple time stuff. So, okay. Uh, so these are essentially upbeats and this is essentially a downbeat. So we have one, two, three. And the reason are is because these naturally don't receive the beat. Now in four, four, it's a little more complicated again because now we have this guy and it breaks up. So we create like almost a natural, some people 
almost a natural sort of secondary downbeat, but it's not quite an important beat as the first one. There's this hierarchy. Now, of course, you can change this, do whatever you want, but that makes picking out these guys really easy. So that's pretty much the downbeat and the upbeat. It's just important to understand this relationship because you saw that just by going to 3-4 and having this unusual number, we have very different things we can do with compound meter versus simple meter. And the combination suddenly change all over the map. So when you're writing beats for something that is in some sort of a compound meter, you should be aware of this. Now, some people, like I was recently asked to put this sort of techno beat over a which is definitely 4-4, four, four, over a 3-4 song. And that was quite an experience and a little tricky, but it, uh, it ended up working out pretty okay. Now, th th I knew that I was going to run into some weird spots, so I had to be creative in how I used fills and drum loops so that I kept it sounding natural without shifting the emphasis of the beat to an unnatural beat. So in that sense, it was sort of just like I had to understand a broader concept of rhythm in order to make it work the way I wanted it to work. So, yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe, support me on Patreon, and have a blessed day.